Hello, family. This is Refueling Your Faith, and today we are in the book of Galatians. Galatians is a letter that Paul wrote to the churches in Galatia. And in this particular book, we find that there are converts who are Jewish, who, as we remember in the Old Testament, God has set up so many uh, rituals and, and things that the Jews need to live by. Uh, in the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, and many of them had decided that although we are justified, although we um, are in relationship with God through the New Covenant, through the putting our faith in Jesus Christ, that they would also maintain some of those things that they used to do in the Old Covenant, and they were making it a requirement, and they were sharing this these requirements with the Gentiles. Gentiles were people who uh, were not under the old covenant or the old way that um, uh, people were to relate to God. But because of Jesus Christ, it had now been opened up, which was the ministry or the message that Paul and others were sharing, uh, that God's love was not just for the ethnic Jews, but for everyone that would put their faith in Christ. So as Paul was in Galatia and many of the other apostles and disciples were sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, they were sharing with them that, hey, it's by faith alone that you have a relationship with God. By faith alone, faith in what Christ did on the cross for our sins, dying for our sins, taking the penalty of our sins. Once we believe that and also receive the resurrection, that we would then live the life that is honoring ring to God now, that that's all that was required. But those who once were Jews were telling these Gentiles, hey, you also have to, it's not just by faith alone, but it's also by following these specific rituals, one in which was circumcision. And we know that in the Old Testament, that once, uh, well, the entire a Jewish uh, ethnic group were to be circumcised at a certain age. And that was to be a symbol of their relationship with God. But because of the new covenant, the new way of relating to God through Jesus Christ, circumcision no longer was necessary. It was now a circumcision of the heart, uh, which was prophesied even in Jeremiah that now God would take it even deeper. Um, and that he would circumcise our hearts, that our symbol or the symbol of our transformation would be a transformed heart. And uh, of course, we use baptism as a outward symbol of something that was happening in our heart. But even if you're baptized and your heart has not been circumcised, you have not changed your thinking and desiring to be who Christ has called you to be, living according to his promise principles. Who cares if you were baptized? Um, so uh, anyways, it's just a, Paul is fighting and persuading them. Hey, don't live according to that. Don't think that you have to be circumcised. The reality is our faith is in Jesus Christ and the work that he has done on the cross. And then he has given us freedom now, not to be slaves to sin, but to be slaves to righteousness, to live according to the standards that God has set. Now we're free to do that. And so that is what he's challenging uh, the Galatians at that time, the churches in Galatia. He's trying to help them understand, hey, this is the message that God gave me. And so you ought to live according to this message that God has for us. And so uh, the first couple of chapters in this in this book are dedicated simply to that, to set a solid foundation and really to help the Galatians not to be swayed by untruths, basically. And then he begins to walk through. And if you are living according to the spirit or the spirit of God is within you, you're not living according to the law, not living according to all of these 10 commandments as that living as though those things are the things that make you have a good relationship with God. Although you ought to be uh, living according to the standards that God has set, but it, it does not depend our relationship with God is dependent upon our faith in the work that Christ has done for us. And then a, a uh, automatic follow through then is to live according to the spirit, to live according to the principles of God's word, because we desire to, because we now have the freedom to. We are no longer slaves to sinful nature, but we have the power now because Christ was risen from the dead. He raised, he was raised up from the dead, as we talked about in the last 
uh, chapter in 1 Corinthians 15, his resurrection is powerful for us because he defeated death. He defeated sin. And so therefore we have the power to defeat sin in our lives and have the freedom to live the way that we were originally created to live. And so, uh, that's what he talks about to walk according to the spirit, not only just talk according to the spirit, to walk our behaviors, to line up with what our mouths say about who we are. And so that is a prayer for all of us that uh, it's real easy to show up on Sunday, real easy to talk about God as the head of my life, um, but to really have that follow through in our behavior and our perspectives and our thoughts is something totally different. And so that's what actually brings us to our highlighted scripture today, which is Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians 6 and 1 says, Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to ourselves so that you too will not be tempted. So what does it say again? Even if anyone is caught in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. And so as we are walking according to the spirit and as we have been charged to walk according to the spirit, the spirit that is within us that revealed to us that that we ought to put our faith in the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross and that we now have freedom not to be bound to sin, but be bound to righteousness, then we're going to, because this is a journey, it's not automatic once we receive Christ, but it's a lifelong journey, a lifelong journey to become who God has called us to be. So as we're on our journey and we see our brother caught in sin, that means that they got caught in what they're doing. It's not secret. I know that you are living in sin, that we ought to restore such a one with the spirit of gentleness. It's... um. It can be real easy when we find somebody caught in sin, especially if it's not a sin that we are doing, to look down on that person, to make judgments about that person. But in this passage, it says restore, repair that person, in relation, be in relationship with that person to restore him in a spirit of gentleness or humility, which means that I'm not thinking more of myself than I ought to think. It's the song that says, hey, or the saying that says, um, if it wasn't for your grace, there I would be also. Understanding that the sin that someone else commits, I could just as easily be in that spot. And with that spirit, and with that spirit, come along someone who's been caught in sin to restore them, to repair them, so that they would get back on the path of righteousness. And then he says, uh, I really like the other part, uh, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. What happens is that we can have such a low view of people when they're caught in sin, especially a sin that's not our own, that we will become blind to our own sin because we're focusing on someone else. But when we realize that we walk in sin as well, it's the passage back in Matthew 7, 7 and 5 that said, hey, let's judge one another. Well, uh, Let's not look down on one another, but see the plank that is in your own eye. See the plank that's in your plank is a large piece. See the plank that's in your own eye. Then you'll be able to see the speck in your brother's eye. And so it's not that we ignore the sin in someone's eye, but we recognize the sin that we that we are in, which allows us to be humble enough to come along somebody as they're traveling in their journey humble because we see ourselves as we are and we are sinful beings walking in a path of righteousness to become who we were going who God has called us to be and we will not be in full we will not experience the full person of who we ought to be until we die and are united with Christ or when Christ returns and he restores us to our original uh the original person that we were supposed to be not marred by sin that is in this world so when we can come along somebody, the scripture says that we ought to restore them with gentleness. So that is my word to you today, that indeed you will see yourself as you are a sinful person and that you would be open to God speaking to you. And when you do that foundationally, then you're able to walk alongside and complete this commandment, which is to come alongside people, restore such a one that has been caught in sin. And so also that you ought to do that. 
that you ought to not ignore someone's sin, but that you would be sensitive about uh, sensitive about how you can come alongside somebody who has been caught in sin. I pray this has been a blessing to you today. In next week, next week we'll be in the book of Ephesians. Have a great day.